Hola amigos, bien o no, y saludos desde Medellín. Hoy voy a compartir otra parte con este libro. Um, hoy voy a leer parte que hablar con el otro francés, no, francés algerian, Albert Camus. Es muy interesante. So this is the hoy. So, hello again, I'm from Medellin. Today I'm going to share with you a reading, another one from Clive James's uh, Cultural Amnesia. Today we're going to look at a section that he's written about the uh, French-Algerian writer Albert Camus. Um, particularly, he's talking about a quote he read in one of uh, Camus' books called The Rebel. So I'm just going to share you th this with you. Um, in a way, he talks about tyranny, um, which is a tragically contemporary topic at the moment. But let's have a go. Tyrants conduct monologues above a million solitudes. It's Albert Camus, The Rebel. When I first read the rebel, this splendid line came leaping from the page like a dolphin from a wave. I memorised it instantly, and from then on Camus was my man. I wanted to write like that in a prose that sang like poetry. I wanted to look like him. I wanted to wear a Bogart-style trench coat with a collar turned up and have an untipped galois dangling from my lower lip and die romantically in a car crash. At the time, the crash had only just happened. The wheels of the wrecked Facel Vega were practically still spinning. And at Sydney University, I knew exiled French students, spiritually scarred by service in Indochina, who had met Camus in Paris. One of them claimed to have shared a girl with him. Later on in London, I was able to arrange the trench coat and the galois, although I decided to forego the car crash until a more propitious moment. Much later, long after having realised that smoking French cigarettes was just an expensive way of inhaling nationalised industrial waste, I learned from Oliver Todd's excellent biography of Camus that the trench coat had been a gift from Arthur Kersler's wife and that the Bogart connection had been, as the academics say, no accident. Camus had wanted to look like Bogart, and Mrs. Kersler knew where to get the kit. Camus was a bit of an actor. He thought, in fact, that he was a lot of an actor, although his histrionic talent was the weakest item of his theatrical equipment. And, being a bit of an actor, he was preoccupied by questions of authenticity, as truly authentic people seldom are. But under the posturing agonies about authenticity, there was something better than authentic. There was something genuine. He was genuinely poetic. Being that, he could apply two tests simultaneously to his own language. The test of expressiveness and the test of truth to life. To put it another way, he couldn't not apply them. Though he sometimes fudged the research and often fell victim to the lure of cadence, Camus was struck with a congenital inability to be superficial. He could be glib, but would regret it while correcting the proofs. He is not being glib here. Over the course of more than 40 years, this line of his must have come to my mind at least a thousand times. I thought of it again in the first minute of realising that I would one day write this book. But the first time I ever read it was the time that really counted, because the idea didn't just strike me as true, it strike it struck me as unbeatably well put. 
He didn't put it in English, of course, and at that stage I could scarcely read a word of French. So I had, I had no way of checking up. But by a lucky break, the line translates easily. It even sounds rather better balanced in English than it does in the original. It would probably sound solid even in Urdu, just as long as the second and third nouns match for polysyllabic weight. What brings the idea to incandescent life is that the line itself is so attractive an example of the very thing the tyrant's monologue can never do. It's interesting. So there we go. Have a brief glimpse at uh, Camus' excellent book, The Rebel. So I hope you enjoyed this one. De Hemi Sabel, como siempre, en los comentarios. But for now, from Medellin, we'll say cheerio.